Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Kahn Report wherever you get your podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, that subscribe button. You can find us there on Empire Media. That's A-M-P-I-R-E. It would be much appreciated. Well, today I'm joined by the Washington Post, Nikki Javala, as we go over the roster and some pros and cons of what we've seen throughout training camp and what Nikki specifically has seen throughout training camp and her thoughts. You know a lot of my thoughts, so I want to give you some other people's opinions and observations as well. So Nikki will do that for you. You can find, you can read her work at WashingtonPost.com, of course, and you can read my work on ESPN.com. I'll have a story this weekend about Ron Rivera and two years removed from his cancer battle and just some of the stuff he still has to deal with and some of the ways it has changed him as a person, as a coach. So look for that this weekend on ESPN.com. And as you can see, I'm not in the tent today. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm not in the tent, of course. I'm in the media room. The tents are all gone. We're no longer going to be able to watch practice and work down at the field. So I'm coming to you from the media room at the commander's facility. That's why it looks like a hostage situation, but I am okay. Anyway, Nikki and I get into a lot of things. And I do want to get into a couple of things before I play my conversation with Nikki. Let's start with running back Antonio Gibson. And Ron Rivera was asked, after practice on Thursday, if Antonio Gibson was going to be the main kick returner, he, he said, yes, he is. I mean, they really like him there. So I think that's a sign of they're still, they clearly want to get Brian Robinson the ball. They clearly want to get J.D. McKissick the ball as a third down back, and they want to keep Gibson involved. And this is one of the ways they can get him some touches during the game. Of course, some of that's going to depend on opposing kickers and if it's a touchback or not. But they want to get Gibson the ball in space. We've seen it in practice with him coming running routes out of the backfield. And I always stress that because that's what you see and sometimes in the slot, um, but motioning out of the backfield or in a running backs role in the slot, not as a main receiver type out of the slot, but in the slot as a running back. Um, you know, in, in, so he could obviously motion back into the backfield, et cetera. So We've seen that in practice, but this is another way they want to get him the ball. So it's no surprise that he's going to do that, especially if Robinson has usurped him as that main ball carrier on early downs. And that does seem to have been the case, clearly based on rotations over the last couple of weeks in practice. But I also wanted to talk about Nicky and I are going to talk about Curtis Samuel in a few minutes. But the couple of things I wanted to point out is that he has actually looked pretty good in practice. And I think he's going to be a big help. And I think it's funny because one of the ways I've seen with he and Gibson, too, is on certain routes that I think um, Samuel can be dangerous on, too. Some of those wheel routes I think he can be very dangerous on, especially if you have other backs in the backfield that can maybe delay um, with a play action or something like that. I think that's something that I'll be curious to see how they use him there. But Samuel has looked pretty good. In fact, on practice on practice in practice on Wednesday, he made two really nice plays. One. There was one where he came out of the backfield, ran a ran a, ran a wheel route, but the way the formation and then the play action, the play, the action of the play caused the defender to have to hesitate a little bit. And Samuel was wide open down the side, and they didn't see him, but he was wide open. So it's something just to pay attention to. And then the next play, they hit him down the seam in a last second throw in a two minute drill for a touchdown. But it was also design of the play gets him open. But I think his versatility will be no, much much more noticeable this year. And I think that one of the more positive things for them this training camp was watching Samuel and how he progressed and the fact that he's been able to practice for a couple of weeks now and that he looks like somebody who's definitely going to be able to contribute this year. Um, they also brought back guard Wes Martin. They cleaned him off waivers from Jacksonville on Wednesday. He does have a legitimate shot to make this roster. Is it likely? I don't know. But I know that what they like, and Ron Rivera said it after practice, but I know what they like is that he's a, they like as a, him as a powerful guard, more of a straight ahead blocker. Um, he can play guard, he can play center, as opposed to the, the difference between he and Keith Ishmael, for example. Ishmael's been more of a center, but when they play center, Martin is much more able to be, to play with power versus Ishmael, who is much better on the move. Ishmael gets in trouble when he's just having to sit at the line and block, drop straight back and block. And as Martin is better in that area. So, and I don't even know if either one of those guys is going to make the roster, but it could come down to, do they want more power there? Or do they want a guy who can move there? 
and Ishmael has missed the last two practices because of an undisclosed injury. So that could play into everything as well. It could be they try to put one of them on the practice squad. I don't know, but I know that Martin has a legit shot to make it. And also because they're, they need some depth at guard, whereas Norwell and Turner both have missed time with injuries in camp. Turner was back on the field today, didn't did more than he did yesterday during group drills, not in full teamwork, but he was at least back out there. So we'll see if he progresses to being ready for the opener. But if not, you better have some depth at, in the interior. And I think that's another reason why Martin was here, or why they brought him back, is just to see what happens there. Anyway, that's it from me. Now, let's get to my conversation with the Washington Post, Nikki Javala. All right, Nikki, well, we've been, what, is it three or four weeks of camp? I kind of lose track. I guess probably four weeks of camp or practices, I guess, because technically this last week was a training camp but we were still able to watch the practices. So before we get into the third preseason game, what it means and all that, I am curious about your general impressions from what you've seen this summer of this team. Yeah, I think Karsten is is definitely an upgrade. Um, that part seems obvious out there. Um, a little concerned about the O-line depth with all the injuries. Um, but I think this offense as a whole has a chance to take a real step. Um, mostly my concerns lie with the defense. Um, especially after the first two showings where you see some of those lingering mistakes continue to crop up, uh, mainly the third down defense. Um, and especially with them being out, um, being without chase for at least four weeks, probably longer if they don't put them back in right away. Um, so that that's my biggest concern, but I think the offense has a chance. We'll see. I mean, I feel like last year we, we said the wide receiver core looked really good on paper. Can they perform? And, you know, they lost a couple pieces early, but it's always kind of been an if. Um, so we'll see. Um, I, I still think this is a team that rests with its defense. And however, you know, as far as they go, the team will go. Right. And you, let's stay with the offense, too, because you brought up a good point. We, we Last year was all the receivers and receivers. Such a big part of that is one guy's healthy this year and he wasn't last year. Mm-hmm. What do you think Curtis Samuel? And and then also they have Jahan Dotson. And last year it was like, oh, De'Ami Brown, third round pick. He just hasn't shown enough to say that he's going to be this big time. Certainly a, you know, I don't even know what, I don't know how regular a contributor he's going to be. We have to see more. But with Dotson, we've seen more. So what what do you think, is that the difference this year? Or is there something else that you see in this group overall? I think it's just the additional talent, the dynamic talent. Um, You know, Curtis is a guy that can catch passes out of the backfield. He's, he's got the speed. Um, I I think AG story is complicated, but you know, if they get him in space more, I think that adds even more, even though he's with the backs. Um, You know, I think Jahan Dotson is very similar to, um, to Terry McLaurin, just with his, just with his details and his route running, his his catching ability. Um, so I think they just have more talent back there. Um, and Cam Sims always seems to come up with a big play. Diami with his speed, um, stretching the offense vertically. He's a good candidate to be there for that. Um, yeah. So I, I think just overall they have more depth. They have uh, a broader skill set with the players they have. Um, and they can really – if barring health, of course, they can start to run the offense that Scott Turner envisioned from the start. And, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm picking on Demi Brown a little bit because I talked about him yesterday. And I, to me, Cam Sims just has consistently outproduces okay. him during camp. Yep. But if he, like last year, they needed him to be a two or a three because of what they had. This year, he's a four or five. And I think that's an example of where they're at. So if whatever, what he gives them, he can give them something with speed and that can be a help. He doesn't have to go out there and say, Oh, he's got to catch 40 passes to be successful. No, he's got to contribute. And so if he can do that, then and he's your four or five, you're in pretty good shape. Um, With, with Antonio, we know like they're always talking about, they want to get all these guys the ball, but you Mm -hmm. want to get JD McKissick the ball and you want Brian Robinson running the ball. So how hard do you, what's your expectation for a guy like Antonio or for the running back group in general, as far as how how hard is it going to be to split up and use these guys the way that they would like to? Yeah, I mean, there's only one ball to go around. Ron has said that multiple times. Um, I think that's where getting Antonio involved in space could really help. I mean, he is a former receiver. That's 
what he knows best. I mean, he's only been a running back for, you know, now year three. So, you know, getting him out there more, I think could help. We've seen that in practice, but I, Ron also wants to run it by committee. So, you know, and who, whoever starts fast, whoever um, has the hot hand, so to speak, they're going to be the ones that are out there. So I, I could see him in, um, uh, Brian Robinson kind of switching every couple of series, if that's what it needs to be. Um, but they do have talent back there. That's honestly the group I'm least worried about. Right, right, me too. Because there's, there's so much talent and they got guys that can do anything with those three, you know, JD can come in on third downs. He always seems he's got the right instinct. JD like is, is pretty versatile. I think he's kind of overlooked in that way. Um, but AG has, you know, quick cuts. He's powerful. And Brian Robinson is just, you know, a polished back, a big back who just finds a hole and goes. Um, so I, I think it can run a by committee bring in JD on third downs, but how they do it, I think it could differ week by week. Sure, and I agree. And I think then it also depends, as you know, like if they're converting third downs that week or not, then it's like you can get right. to more of those plays for those guys which is a little bit, you know, then it allows you to use more guys broad, you know, get deeper into your playbook. But yeah, I think, I think you're right. I I'm kind of expecting a, Hey, you know what? AG has got a role in this week, stick with them, you know, right. or like this package with JD is working really well. Cause there were times last year, they loved JD and there, and there were games where like, where is he? Right. Right. You know? Exactly. With, with the offensive line, what is the concern? Is, the, is there a concern for you there? You're starting to get some guy. Norwell came back. Trey Turner had a helmet on, which is a, you know, it's a, which is a progress for him. And we yeah. didn't see him do a whole lot, but at least he was back in a uniform with the helmet on. What's, what's your concern with, with that group? I think it's always a concern when you're starting five, don't play together the first time until like a, two days before the opener. I think that would always be a concern for me. How quickly can they gel? I mean, because Trey Turner missed almost the entirety of camp, say for like one or two days, right? Um, so that would be concern. Yes, they had OTAs. Yes, they had mini camp, but you're really getting up into crunch time there. But more concerning is the depth, especially on the interior. If they can get Trey Turner back and Andrew Norwell back, great, but they've dealt with so many injuries already at the onset of camp that, you know, do they feel confident in the guys they have back there? Now, one benefit of all that was those guys got extra reps. So they should be um, pretty well in tune with what they want to do. But I think that, I think depth would always be a concern there. The one good thing is John Matsko, because even when there are depth issues, he seems to get the guys ready no matter what. Absolutely. Has your thought on this team changed Go from when you what you thought of them going into camp to this point? No, not really. I, I think they kind of look the same. Um, you know, and you and I have had this con- conversation at practice too, just about knowing what we're seeing. I think at first I I would put a lot of blame on Carson Wentz whenever a, a pass wasn't completed or was or it sailed like three feet over the head of a receiver, and it's just like oh gosh, this is going to be a long year. I think he settled down a bit in camp. Um, But I also think a lot of what we're seeing is not totally on Carson, as you mentioned. Um, I think you have to look closer and see if, you know, the right route is being run and et cetera, et cetera. But I think they have settled down. You see the connection with him and Terry getting better. Um, I think the defense disappointed a bit. But I also don't think the defense is running fully what it intends to run. So I, I think a lot of the mistakes in preseason and then the comments like, oh, we're not worried. And then everybody blows up. Like, how can you not be worried? I, I think a lot of it is because they're not running what they intend to run in the regular season. So they feel like they can fix it. But we'll see. Right. And I think that's always the hard part to know. And I know everybody always focuses on coverage and all that. But it also felt like last week the pass rusher wasn't there. What have you seen from the D line or heard from them mm-hmm. in practice to say that hey, this year it could be better, different? And then we got the we got a line change um, there, a co- line coaching change there as well. So, yeah. what have you seen from them this year to say that it could be different than last year? It could be emphasis on could I if they can find you know that 
that help at DN where Chase Young is going to be missing for four, probably maybe more games. Right. Um, you need a consistent player there. Right now, it's 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 usually been James Smith Williams and Casey Tuhill. I think James Smith Williams has improved quite a bit year yeah. over year. Um, I think Casey Tuhill has a chance, but it's not hasn't been consistent yet. So if they can get that spot locked down, I think they could be quite good. Um, I think there's been a big emphasis on playing together, not freelancing, um, just communicating more. And they seem to be doing that out there at practice. But again, it's, you know, you're playing against your own guys, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I think a lot of it is is going to be mixing it up, you know, having more five-man fronts um, and, and just making sure they're cohesive. I mean, they have uh, three, maybe four really strong pass rushers out there. Um, definitely four when Chase Young is back. You know, use them. They have to be more in sync than they were last year. What have you seen from Montez? Because it seems like even we talked about this last year, but it seems like even more this year that he's taken another step with just how vocal he is. Yeah. I love watching him in practice. He has no problem trash talking. Oh. <laughs> he's pretty good at it. I'll, I'm not going to lie. Um, but he's did you definitely. Shovel, did you see the shovel move the other day? Oh, so great. So I mean, great. Just for people, <laughs> for people listening, watching, whatever. So it was like, there was, I think it was in the red zone. Yeah. And the offensive line, they were rotating the, the for the line every two reps. And so after the second rep, the the defense blew up the line, and he just starts doing like a shovel thing, like get him out of here, get him out of here. It was like he's digging a shovel and he's, popping he's away great. the dirt. Yeah, no, there's if you listen closely at their practices, there's always a good one liner. Um, yeah. unrelated. Sorry, I'm going off on tangents. Luke Del Rio yells for Jake Hausman, their new tight end, is like Jake from State Farm. We need you. <laughs> I missed that one. That's it was funny. great. So. Anyway, uh, you were saying, sorry. With, with, but with Montez, and, you know, it's funny because yeah. we've heard that from him too, but I've also heard him encouraging, like, if a guy on offense makes a good play and he's on the sidelines or by yeah. it, he'll actually, you know, basically verbally pat him on the back too. So it just yeah. seems like he's taking more and more, maybe broadening himself more in that area. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I see him come to the sidelines after a play and he's hanging with the offensive players um talking to some of the backs the tight ends he instigates sometimes when he goes over there but for the most part it seems like they're pretty cool he's a he knows sometimes the balance and you know just kind of poking the bear versus you know getting them upset and riled up um i think a lot of the beef has been with charles leno when it crosses the line but um he does do that a lot um you can hear him yelling on the sidelines with chase um so yeah i i think you are seeing more leadership from him i want to see that next step from him oh. in pass rushing because he has he has all the tools i mean he's he he's an athletic freak and i mean that in the nicest way um but you don't see that production yet that finishing um c consistently so I, I think this could be a big year for him what else with the defense too like what are some of the other things that you say you uh, like like you like there you have some concerns or some thoughts or whatever what are some of yours as as you know that you have that haven't been answered for you yeah the linebackers um last week kind of concerned me with their coverage i mean the tight ends it's the chiefs you got to remember but the tight ends pretty much carved them up um, I, I think Cole gave up four relations. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that would concern me, but that's where I'm like, you know, if they're going more four to five, which is now their so-called base, um, and using more five up front, more nickel packages, you know, maybe that's where they can cover themselves there. Um, still want to see Jamin Davis may have more of an impact for a first round pick. Um, you know, he's starting to look more comfortable, but you know, there are still moments where there are lapses and, you know, really bad blown tackle leads to a score. Um, and then in coverage, I, I've been impressed with the improvement of the secondary so far. Again, I always have to tell myself that this is practice. They're practicing against each other. A lot of times against the air. Is this fully what I'm seeing? Is this what we're going to see in games? Um, but I think the communication there has been good. I think some of the younger guys are really promising with Percy Butler and Derek Forrest at safety. 
but there are still some huge lapses and, you know, especially on third down defense, can they hold it together then? I mean, yeah, it was Patrick Mahomes and it's hard to stop him no matter what, but he seemed to have, he seemed to throw it wherever he wanted, um, just drifting in the backfield and then hitting his target downfield. So can they really get on the same page for that? Well, I would say the key word there, drifting in the backfield, and that's because the pass rush needs to do a better job too. But the funny they, thing is, they like, need pass rush and coverage. Exactly, I was going to say the the pass the coverage needs to be tighter. But then, if you're five seconds, the coverage had been tight. But like, right. there are times definitely where it's like, well, give us an extra second to get home by covering better. Well, right. you know, help us out by you know. So that it, that's where they always talk about it works hand in hand and. And I think, you know, it's funny because the communication has been better. They've talked a lot about it, but sometimes, you know, it it feels like the coverages aren't blown as much as sometimes they'll right. lose. And so I, I don't know yeah. if, is the end result the same, you know, we'll see, yeah. but I think that's. I think Del Rio's defense is complex and people forget that. And it, you know, if, if you don't have the perfect personnel for it, then you're going to, it may take a while for people to yeah. get acclimated and, the line, the mic position in his defense is a big, big role. the The line is, it can be more complicated. The secondary is definitely more complicated, especially now if they want to play more match zone. Then the communication has to be on point. Right. Other, you know, um, it's all about guarding one man and letting him off once he's out of your zone. And you guys have to be on the same page, otherwise it's not going to work. The guy's just going to run free. So. You know, I, I think it's taking guys some time to get acclimated to that. And thank goodness it's it's time for this team to produce. It is. And, and the hard part, too, like you said, with the defense, what is it going to look like? Because the disguising of coverage, et cetera, you're not going to do it a lot of that in the preseason. Right, right. But it, they've got to be better. Like this group has to be, you know, talent wise, they should be top half. Right. If they're not. There's going to be problems this season. Right. Do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And they got to start, they got to start faster. I mean, they lost yeah. what the first four games last year. I mean, they, that's a slow start. Yes. I mean, in each of the preseason games this year, they've given up, uh, they've allowed their opponents to convert first three third downs, I believe. Yeah. And got to be gotta better. Start got to be better. So looking yeah. ahead to Saturday, what are some of the, I don't know how much they're going to play the stars. You know, Ron Rivera, when yeah. he asked about it, just kept saying very limited. But I don't know. I still, that wasn't a yes. Who's going to play them? It was right. so. So we'll see if they play or not. And if they do, it'd be very limited. But like last year, they didn't play. Clearly, we know we know who the stars are. So what are some of the as we go into this last game? What are some of the areas that you're looking at as kind of key spots to still decide? Yeah, I'd say the fourth, fifth DT as our you know fifth DT fourth DT, fifth DN spot. I mean, the competition on the back end of the D line could be yeah. pretty significant. Um, it hurts losing Bud Mirotimi for the competition at the last DE spot, but, you know, Shaka Tony, he's back there. Um, Bada, um, you know, I think those are key spots, especially while Chase Young is out. Um I'd say the, you know, the last safety spots, you've got a, a lot of talent there at safety, younger guys. How are you going to make that all work? So, you know, Reeves, Percy Butler, uh, Derek Forrest, those guys. Um, what else? I, you know, tight end, how many tight ends do they keep and how many will play in this game? Um, that will be interesting oh. since, um, Cole Turner and Curtis Hodges and John Bates have still been working on the sideline um, as of yesterday. Um, and what else? I guess, uh, you know, the, the bottom end of the O-line group, yeah. you know, it's the third preseason game is unlike, you know, years before when it was always the starters, but now that they only have three preseason games, the last one is all about the younger guys, you know, fighting for roster spots. This is their last glorified tryout for the team. Um, so it, it's all about, you know, putting on their best so they can try to change minds or solidify their spot in the, on what the coaches are thinking. I mean, I, I'm sure you have, I've seen guys all the time become, that last guy out of nowhere because he yeah. had a monster performance in the last preseason game. So you can change coaches' minds with this one outing. So 
What last question then? What's the one position group that you that you still have the biggest questions about? And again, like you know, mm -hmm. regardless of final cuts, because this the questions are they what they are. And but what's the one position group you still have the most questions about? I I would say linebacker or tight end. I mean, mainly tight end only because of the injuries. injuries. Yeah. I think if they're all healthy, you know, I think they got a good group there. Right. Um, linebackers, they are what they are. I think they've adapted their defense kind of around that group, not to say they're the centerpiece at all, but knowing they don't have the elite talent of other teams, they've kind of adapted and really put the emphasis on their line and um, tried to improve their coverage. So, um, but I think linebackers definitely, that's kind of always been a question mark for them over the last few years. Yeah. And I think like you, Holcomb, all we heard early in the off season was better as an outside linebacker. Now he's staying in the middle. So produce there. And then Jamin has to make the impact. And I've seen strides in him, but you've got we've got to see it during the regular season. And right. when it's like we talk about teams being vanilla with this team, so are other teams that they're seeing. So how are they going to, you know, the one thing like the question was the hesitation last year. Right. Are you how are you going to stress him with that? And like right. how does he respond to that? That's what we need to see. And to see, like, okay, he really is making the kind of strides they need to not just play better but to help this defense play better. So, and then, then depth. So we'll see, but glad it'll be the preseason will be over after Saturday. And then we can start looking ahead. Although it's two weeks for discussion for that first game. That's a long time. So, yeah. but, but that's Never better. Than, yeah. yeah. So, well, Nikki, thank you very much for coming on. I appreciate it. And sure. we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks for having me, John. Thanks to Nikki for joining me. Thank you, as always, for listening. I'll be back with another episode on Sunday morning, talking to the voice of the Commanders, Bram Weinstein, as we wrap up the preseason and look ahead to Tuesday's final cuts. We'll talk to you next time.